Hello everyone, I'm Ben from What Culture. This is Jules from What Culture. Jules Hello. has been playing a lot of the Wipeout Omega collection, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. is out today Ooh. on PlayStation 4. Now, Jules, new review format. Oh yeah, we do the we score, do the score first. first. What score did you give it? Four out of five. Four out of five. That was eight fingers, but four out of five. A fantastic score mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. a wonderful game. We're going to talk all about it now, of course, about what is going on. I don't know which sections are really applicable here. I assume narrative isn't. Narrative is completely out the window, uh, from what I can tell, because it's um, a compilation of three or two games, if you look at it. You've got uh, Wipeout 2048, which was the, the HD remaster of the PS Vita game. Yep. And then you've got uh, Wipeout HD, which is a PS3 game. Game, and mm -hmm. you've got the expansion pack for that, which is called Wipeout Fury, which doesn't really count as a separate game, but they've marketed it as three different right. pieces. Got more tracks and more cars. And there is no storyline in, in any of them. Literally, you're a, uh, you don't even know if you're a man or a woman or an alien or whatever. You're just, you're just a sick Wipeout pilot. You are indeed. Man. You're indeed, and you are getting mad air and fat speeds. Ph fat speeds. Oh yeah. <laughs> So the game looks phenomenal. Uh, it was obviously made for the PS Vita and PS3 respectively, but they've upscaled everything. The ship quality looks great. The shading yeah. on them is just fantastic. You can even go into sort of like a photography mode and have a look around at all of the details they've added on. They've got little touches like fake sponsors and stuff like that, and I love it when games put that amount of effort into it. So it makes it feel like a real universe that you're racing in. Yeah. Fantastic. You'll agree, it looks great though. Oh yeah, I, I think it's the sci-fi aesthetic. I think mm. it, it's, it's rather timeless. Uh, so, so it really lends itself to that. The bright lights, the f you know, because you, you can slow right down. There's, as you said, there's, there's a photo mode mm -hmm. where you can just pause the game and rotate the camera and look mm. at stuff. But it looks so good in motion mm. and equally as good when you when you pause everything and slow it right down. So Definitely. I think it's a real testament to it. There's um, some really cool little touches as well, like the front end of the game with all of the menu systems have this very clean aesthetic. And while that's become quite homogenous with a few games of late where they've basically just stripped everything down to kind of this sort of like very simple text, it works for the sci-fi futuristic element of Wipeout. It feels very connective. Yeah. Um, other nice features as well, when you're turning your ship, the HUD actually moves slightly in your mm -hmm. viewpoint, which is actually great because a fixed sort of uh, bar of information would look weird if your car's turning, but it's staying the same, whereas yeah. this makes you feel that you are a part of the ship that is going around. And it's so Little natural touches. that I didn't even notice it when I was playing. Mm. You had to point it out to me afterwards, so just because of, you know it was just moving with me, it's, and that was great. It's just little touches like that that make the game just look amazing, and the soundtrack is phenomenally well yeah. chosen. They've got the likes of The Prodigy in there as well. There's a few sort of like remixes of old tracks from the first game, mm. and it just fits so well together. Like As an overall package, the game looks sounds and feels great to play. It handles fantastically. It's yeah. a really, really fun game. It's definitely a game that's made uh, by people who really love the original and it's made for people who grew up with that because I feel like uh, we, we noticed when we played some two player together that mm. you were either first or you are dead last and there's yeah. like no rubber banding whatsoever so you need to know these tracks inside and out to I get the most out of them. I had a tough time. The first few races I had a really tough time. But then again once we played the same track over and over again mm. it became sort of like second knowledge so yeah it's it's a very very fun experience. There's a few tactical things you can do where you can double tap the shoulder buttons, uh, they can shift your vehicle immediately to the, to the left or right so right. that creates some sort of last minute split second decisions. There is uh, combat and defensive power ups which are really useful so you can get like mini guns, rockets, plasmas, like this I think that makes the whole track turn into like a bendy, oh, bendy road and basically they just are designed to slow your opponent down or destroy them. Okay. So you can win just by killing all of your opponents if you wanted to. Right. But that's very difficult. Okay, so it's, it's yeah. I mean, if, if you're familiar with, with Wipeout, then you know what you're getting. Exactly. All the power-ups, all the all the speed boosts and stuff, they're all little units on the track in mm -hmm, front of mm -hmm, you that you mm -hmm. just zoom over and stuff. And this game is fast. Like, when mm. you start off, it feels very slow because the game is hand-holding you and being like, we can teach you how to be a, an amazing racing pilot, but as soon as the wheels come off, my god are they off, because the speed that you can get to in this game is unrivaled. It's... Yeah. It's, it's almost yeah. uncontrollable, unless you oh, yeah, really, definitely. really go... What I like, though, about it, because I played a little bit of, of it at yours mm -hmm, over the mm -hmm. weekend, is that 
instead of a skid button, they, as you said, they've got these air brakes. Yeah. So you sort of, you brake on the right of your car and steer to the right to essentially skid. But mm. it's not skid. If you hold them both together, you'll slow it. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's unique. And I've never really played a Wipeout game before. It, it was never really for me, but mm. I just thought that was quite, I, I found it quite a novel yeah. approach to handling a vehicle. It, it handles really, really well. Uh, the sense of speed, uh, the track layouts are varied. Uh, can you sometimes get like mad amounts of air. So that creates for some amazing sort of set pieces as you're racing over the brow of a hill. Mm -hmm. It's very tense all the time, and even though I, I'm not the best racer, especially not on this game, I was still having enough fun to want to go back and try again and again to beat my right. personal times or the other AI racers. Really, really enjoyed it. Okay. So in terms of the multiplayer, uh, there's a two-player offline split screen, which mm -hmm. is great because a lot of games are sort of moving away from this couch. Sort and you of can like choose gameplay. horizontal or vertical, that depending on what you want. <laughs> that is very true. I don't know why you choose vertical, though, because you want to see as much of yeah, the track that, as possible. that does seem like a very odd choice. And it also has an online mode as well, which is like, uh, it's looking like it's going to be great based on the fact that it's the same online offerings that were in uh, Wipeout 2048 for the PS Vita mm -hmm. and the online version for Wipeout HD. So nothing's changed on that front. Yeah. There's a load of customization options that you can do. You can do like AI uh, intelligence, the speed, obviously the track layout, whether it's going to be going forward or reverse. You can turn power ups on and off. It's, yeah. There's like nice little things that will mean that you can spend a fair few hours with that game in the multiplayer session and keep adapting it to fit the needs of your group, right. which is cool. Mm -hmm. It's when you get immersed, isn't it? Because it took me a few races to get get into it. Mm -hmm. But like with the music, the the bright flashing lights, everyone racing around you, the fact that there's no rubber banding, so if you yep. if everyone's all bunched up, to, you can you can be in last place and you can see everyone in front yeah. of you. Like this <laughs> this could change instantly, and, and you can't look at anything else. You just have tunnel vision. You're looking directly at the. Uh, at your portion of the screen if you're yeah. playing multiplayer and you just you've, you're so focused and you don't get that in many games no you? not at all and i found that to be a great thing like you say the lack of rubber banding is actually quite refreshing it makes it feel like an old school racing game mm -hmm. where like if you're in last you could be racing a perfect lap you'll still end up last it's just luck of the draw and skill that will get you back to the top so yeah. And that's great because in other games like Mario Kart, you could just be like, "Well, I'm at the back, but I've got a bullet bill, so that's going to yeah, here I come, watch yeah. out." So yeah, it just it feels great, like an, like a slice of old school arcade fun. So here are three things that you need to know about the Wipeout Omega Collection. One, it is definitely worth the price because you're getting two full games and one DLC for it, and all of them just feel like it's a, an abundance of content. That's like. I think that I read somewhere that it's something like 26 tracks in all, it's like 45 unlockable vehicles, there's progression right. systems in it as well, so you've got like a reason to go back, there's like best times, there's tons of game modes. It's It just feels like you're getting Fantastic a lot of bang for your buck. Number two, I don't know if I can recommend this to people who haven't played a Wipeout game before, because... It's, it kind of finds itself in a very weird uh, niche because it's not uh, detailed enough on the customization front to be classed along the likes of Forza or Gran Turismo, obviously. Mm. Uh, but it's not arcadey enough uh, to be considered along the lines of like uh, Mario Kart or like Outrun or something like that. Yeah. So this finds itself in its very own position. So it's hard for me to recommend this to people who haven't tried the original because the sense of speed, the difficulty of the tracks, and the fact that there is just quite a lot to sort of take in all at once. Mm -hmm. Can I only really recommend it to people who really enjoyed like the games like F-Zero GX and things like that, people right. who love their speed and love challenge. So okay. yes, but tentatively no, if you know what I mean. Right. And in number three, the game looks and sounds fantastic. From a presentation point of view, it's one of the best remasters that I've seen on the PS4. And you know what? I'm actually glad that Sony is rehashing a lot of these nostalgic mm -hmm. games because it really, they are doing, they're doing them justice. Right. And that's, that is just so refreshing to see. So there we go. That's our full review for the Wipeout Omega Collection on PlayStation 4. It's out this week, mm -hmm. only on PlayStation 4. Uh, Jules. You enjoyed the game? I did indeed. Four out of five. Four out of five. Let us know in the comments if you're planning on picking up this game, or if you're excited, if you're a big fan of Wipeout, mm -hmm. if this has persuaded you in any way to buy it, let us know. Until next time, I've been Ben from More Culture. And I've been Jules. And thanks for